Hello friends, have you been trying to learn orthodontic treatment planning? Or you have just gone through few orthodontically treated cases and you are trying to figure out the basis of treatment planning made in those cases. So this course is just for you. A very warm welcome in this journey to the MOOC course entitled Space Gaining in Orthodontics. I am Dr. Enel Bhambri, Professor and Head, Department of Orthodontics and Interfacial Orthopedics, Surendra Dental College and Research Institute, Sri Ganganagar. I hope you all of have gone through the course structure and outline and I genuinely feel that you are going to have a wonderful, knowledgeable time with us. So we, in this lecture today, I'll tell you about all the space gaining methods in general and the overall planning for the whole course. So put on your learning hats and start begin with the learning thing. So the first thing is, why is space required in orthodontic treatment? So space is actually required to move the teeth into ideal locations. For example, correction of crowding. Let's say a patient presents to us with a chief complaint of irregularly placed teeth. So in order to relieve crowding, in order to align these teeth, we require space. Another patient reports to us with a chief complaint of forwardly placed teeth. So, so that we can take the teeth back in order to retract the teeth, in order to take the teeth back, in order to distalize them, again we require space. We all know that the rotated teeth, they acquire much more space than usual. So in order to correct the rotations, we require space. In cases with exaggerated curve of speed, in order to level the curve of speed, we again require space. So this exaggerated curve of speed can be because of two reasons. One, the over eruption of anteriors. Two, supra eruption of molars or infra eruption of molars. So in patients who present to us with supra eruption of anteriors, intrusion has to be done. And mind you, this intrusion also requires space. In cases which require correction of molar relationship, Let's say we want to convert a class 2 or a class 3 molar into class 1. So that is going to acquire space. If the molar is end on or half unit class 2, it requires 3 mm of space. But if it is a full unit class 2, it requires 6 mm of space. So this molar correction, be it class 2 or class 3, we are going to require space in maxillary or mandibular arch depending upon the malocclusion. Then what are the methods of gaining space? So broadly these methods, they are categorized under two extraction and non-extraction method. So as the term itself suggests extractions, that means we are going to extract few teeth from the oral cavity in order to gain space. Whereas the non-extraction method, they involve the modalities like expansion, interproximal reduction, molar distalization, molar uprighting, derotation of posteriors, we are going to take all these modalities separately in all the modules as you have gone through the course outline. Now, a very important question is when to employ the method of non-extraction and when should we go for extraction? So, whenever we have a patient, we are in dilemma. It is a borderline case. Shall we go for extraction or non-extraction? So, as a rule of thumb, whenever the crowding is mild to moderate, we should go for non-extraction method. Whenever we have severely measly and lingually tipped posterior teeth, that is the arches, they are narrow, they are V-shaped, constricted arches are there, we should go for non-extraction method. And very importantly, whenever there is no need to alter the facial profile, that means patient has a balanced face, we do not afford to uh, worsen the patient's profile, we need to just align the teeth, we should always go for non-extraction method. So as I mentioned earlier, we are going to take all the non-extraction methods separately in the upcoming modules. So see you in the next module with one of the non-extraction method that is proximal stripping. Thank you.